Aloha, everybody. Mike Drutar, principal broker and owner of Next Home Paradise Realty, bringing you our November market report. We've got a lot of data to pour through. We're also going to cover some real estate news. I'll be sharing a number of articles that I find very interesting. Uh, I'll have the links in the description down below so that you can look at those on your own. But I'll give you the crib notes version and what I think it might mean for the future of our market and the national market in many cases. So stay tuned for that part two. The first thing I need you to do is please click the subscribe button and ring the bell to get a notification when we put out new videos. That way when we show something, you can see it, uh, you can leave some feedback. I really appreciate it. It helps me build a channel. So let's start taking a look at the data. Let's dive in. Okay, so let's dive into the data that we have for the month of November. We're going to look island wide first, so we want to take a big picture look. We had 254 residential sales across the island for the month of November. That's up 25% from November of last year. For condos, we had 82 sales. That's also an increase, a big increase actually, of 52% over last year and 205 land sales. That's up 64%. Now that's island-wide looking at all of Hawaii, east and west Hawaii. Looking at our west Hawaii market, starting in South Kohala. Interesting number that we see here on the residential side. We only had 22 house sales. Now you'll remember last month there was a lot of sales, a big jump over the previous October for residential sales in Kohala. This month, only two more units above November of last year, so that's pretty interesting. They made up for it, though, in the condominium market. We saw 30, 33 condos sold. That's up 94%, significant jump. And then we saw nine land sales. That's an increase from only four last year. Okay, so now we're going to take a look at the North Kona market. We're going to start off with the residential market, and this is really the one that we look at the most closely. This is our bell cow. As that market goes higher and higher, there's a gap that exists between the North Kona condo market and the South Kohala residential market. And once that gap gets so big, there's more value down there in the condos and the houses up in South Kohala. So if we see the North Kona price start really jumping up there, we can be relatively sure we're gonna see South Kohala follow upwards, and then we're gonna see the North Kona condo market follow up as well. So what do we see? North Kona residential, 70 sales. That's an all time record for November. That's up 52% over November of last year. For condos, we saw 38 condos, pretty good increase of so 31% there. So we're starting to see some movement. Land sales, this is an amazing number actually. We don't do a lot of land sales here. We saw 18 last month. That's up from five in November of 2019. That's a significant increase. And that tells you that there's very little inventory and some people are even looking at building. I suspect that more than half of those are actually builders looking for land to build a spec house uh, to be able to meet the demand on this market because there is so little inventory. We're looking now at total sales volume. How much money is just coming into our market here on the Big Island? Uh, this is a, a big indicator of just widespread investment. November, $282.7 million pumped into the Big Island real estate market in terms of land, condos, and residential. We're not looking at the commercial market on this. Uh, that's an increase of 97 million, 52% over November of 2019. So we really are seeing a lot of money getting poured into this market. Median prices, residential median price for the island was 458,000. That's pretty impressive. I don't think I've seen it that high before for any month. Uh, right now, the year to date median price uh, for residential properties on the Big Island is $401,000. So far in December, up until December 12th actually, uh, it was for the month of December $495,000. So we're just seeing that number continue to go up. We can say pretty much with 100% confidence at this point, this is only gonna be the second year in our history with a median sales price for residences on the Big Island over $400,000 the other time once over was 2006. Let's look at the median prices. South Kohala residential median price, $642,500. Surprisingly, up only 2% from November of last year. So it's kind of holding there. We saw a big jump, if you remember, last month. 
Condos, this can be a little bit of a volatile market because we often don't have as much data. And there's a few different subsets of condos in the Kohala market. If you get just a handful of resort condos, you can really see that median price jump up. If you have more of the residential condos sold than resort condos, you can see that median price really really drop. There's basically two separate condo markets uh, in the South Kohana, Kohala condo market. In any case, the median price was $728,222. That's up 36%, but again, small sample size. Here we go. North Kona, residential, median price, $850,000. That is a new record. Uh, speaking with an appraiser at the beginning of the month when we first saw this, this number come out, uh, he mentioned on my Facebook page, when he first saw it, he thought it was a typo. That is a really, really impressive number. Uh, you'd have to go back a few years and say, well, that looks like an Oahu number. That doesn't look like a Big Island number. So very, very impressive. Uh, the condo median price in North Kona, that only went up 0.6%. So basically flat from last year, which is really interesting, 387000 $500. Current inventory. Let's take a look at it now. This is the story that everyone's talking about. There's just nothing to buy. We all have a lot of buyers out there ready, willing, and able to purchase, but we're just not seeing anything. Residential inventory combined for North Kona and South Kohala under a million dollars is just under one month. Even if we expand that market out to two million dollars and below, we had 82 sales last month and we only have 91 active listings. So just over a month, even when we expanded out to $2 million as our price point. Currently, remember, we only have 91 active listings. We have 159 of those properties under $2 million in escrow. So those are sales that are already pending. Some of those escrows, we know historically about 20% will come back on the market at some point or another. But that really illustrates how difficult of a situation we have with inventory. And that means you're going to have to be aggressive when it comes time to put in an offer. You're going to have to be ready to make your offer the day you see the property. And you're going to have to be having your finances lined up and ready to go right away. Uh, I'm not seeing a lot of bidding wars, which has become a term that people are familiar with from our last real estate rise. But we really just don't see it these days. What ends up happening is buyers check out when they hear the word bidding war, when they see that it's ultra competitive. Uh, though they're willing to put in their best and highest offer uh, after their initial offer, but that's usually about it. So we're not seeing crazy bidding wars. We're seeing from the seller side what's most important is the ease of the offer. How much cash is involved? How soon is the closing? Can they rent the place back afterwards when they try to find somewhere to live? Because sometimes that that's can be one of the bigger issues. It's not always about price. And it's really important to get an idea of what the seller values on the other side of the transaction if you're a buyer. If they need to stay in the property for three months, maybe that's the difference between your offer and someone else's offer, even if they're $20,000 higher. Things like that really matter. So it's really important for your buyer agent, that's me, to do your due diligence on the property and see what's important and craft the offer that works best for the seller and makes it so it's the easiest for the seller to accept. A lot of times it's not price, it's the stress. And if you can reduce their stress, especially in 2020, that can go a long way. Okay, now let's talk about a lot of real estate news. I find this stuff interesting. If you don't, skip to the end. I won't be heard about it. Uh, but this tells us a little bit about where things may be going in the future. The first article I want to show is from CoreLogic, and they do an analysis of public records, and they look at all these different home loans. And here's what we came up with from them. This is from Dr. Frank Northaft, uh, Chief Economist for CoreLogic. Quote, our analysis of CoreLogic public records shows that more than one half of all home mortgage loans created since the onset of the pandemic have been no cash out refinance. By reducing their mortgage rate with these types of loans, homeowners have been lowering both their interest expense and their risk of delinquency. This is super important. If, if you're under the impression that this market is going to crash soon, or even in a couple of years, think about the position of a lot of these people who are doing these refinances. They have suddenly lowered the price of their home for years down the road. Some people are taking 30-year mortgages that they might have 20 some odd years left on, 
and dropping it down to a 15-year mortgage to pay it off even quicker. Some people are still refinancing to a 30-year mortgage and seeing between the extending out of the remaining principal and the lower interest rates, they're seeing their mortgage rates drop or their mortgage costs drop significantly. So let's fast forward out to five years, maybe 10 years. Let's say interest rates in the future are back at a very good 5%. If you're a homeowner, are you going to be really excited about buying another home with a 5% interest rate or even higher when you've got a 2.75% interest rate now? I think this is going to mean that more people will hold on to their homes longer because it's just going to be financially smart. So in the future, we might not see as many homes on the market. People are going to hold on and be less transient than they have been really starting since the 1980s and 90s. So that's a really interesting thing to look at. More than half of all mortgage loans have been no cash out refinances. When you consider how many houses we're selling, that's a lot. The next article is from CNBC. I'll have a link in the description below. It's going to be a video. The, the gist of the article is all cash home sales now are at 36% across the country. That's a lot of cash in the market. I'll additionally tell you anecdotally from my own experience, a lot of people are bringing in 40, 50, 60% cash to a transaction. So there's a lot of cash in this market. Again, that is a protection for major deflation. Uh, people aren't going to walk away from their homes when they have 50% or 100% cash in it. They'll wait out any storm. Be because of that, you're not going to see the strategic defaults that we saw in 2008 through 2012. And that's what really pushed our market down. Here locally, this is something I've always tried because I think this is really important to understanding how sellers are going to act in the future. In 2006, if you combine the residential and condo market for the entire Big Island, 20%, 20.4 exactly, percent of the sales were cash sales. Fast forward out to this year, that number is currently at 37.1%. So you see that we're tracking almost right down to the number nationally, but it just shows you there's a lot of cash in this market. People are going to be staying in their homes. People are not going to be very happy about selling a home for $100,000 less in five years because it's $100,000 of their dollars. It's not the bank's $100,000 like it was back in 2008. The next article is also from CNBC. It's another video. It's talking about the America's looming eviction crisis. Now, this is going to be really interesting. What's going to happen for the investor market if they're sitting on a bunch of properties, rental properties, and these can be individual homeowner investors or institutional investors who have large portfolios. But what happens when the eviction moratorium is over and they're ready to get paid? Uh, it's going to be really interesting. I have talked to a few property managers here locally and surprisingly, given how decimated our uh, travel industry has been, people with portfolios of 30, 60, 75 rental properties that they manage said that they're seeing only three to five. That's it. Folks not paying, uh, paying their rent. So we seem to be largely protected from it for some reason here on the Big Island. I'm not sure how it relates to what's happening in the rest of the country, but we're not seeing a lot of people sitting there not paying their rent. So it's been surprising. So I don't know that we're going to have the eviction crisis that may be in other areas. So if you're counting on that to somehow lower the market or, or you know drop this bubble that some people think we're seeing, you might want to think twice. Another article which is really interesting is just talking how people are moving to the suburbs and looking for a slower pace of life. We're definitely seeing that on the Big Island. You're going to be hard pressed to find a place that's a little more low key and a little more chill than this. Uh, things are really pretty mellow here uh, in Hawaii and we are seeing a lot of people move in here. Uh, and I think it's that lifestyle. So there's the suburbs and then there's the island lifestyle. I think the people who really want to kind of check out of the rat race are coming out here and that's definitely driving our market. Something to keep an eye on. We're seeing more uh, acreage properties sell now than we ever did. It used to be those were almost impossible to sell. Uh, the people with the money, the boomers, didn't want anything to do with acreage. Now we're seeing the boomers come back and buy acreage. We're seeing younger people want to be interested in acreage, growing their own food and living a totally different lifestyle. So we're seeing those changes here uh, in buyer behavior on the Big Island as well. Interest rates, they've been in the news constantly. 14th record low of 2020 was set just last week. We're seeing interest rates now down below 2.7% on a 30-year fixed mortgage on a first home. 
2.7%. Again, on your primary residence at this point, if you bought before the pandemic at any time, it's really difficult to imagine a scenario where you should not be refinancing your home. Like I said, I know people who got in great rates in the mid fours, thrilled, doing backflips. They're now dropping down to 15 year mortgages. And then finally, my final story to me, this is a feel good story. I always talk about the benefits of owning a home versus renting. And one of the biggest benefits is that you get to participate in the market going up and building wealth. Over the course of the pandemic, homeowners in the United States of America have added $1 trillion in equity because of the housing boom. On average, $17,000 per homeowner. It's the largest equity gain in more than six years. Thanks again, guys. Please make sure you click that subscribe button and I'll see you next month.